Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss Birdman, or The Unexpected Virtue of Ignorance, starring Michael Keaton, Zach Galifianakis, Edward Norton, Emma Stone, Naomi Watts, Amy Ryan, and Andrea Riseboro, and directed by Alejandro Gonzalez Inarritu. This, the guy that won Best Picture for that year, and maybe Best Director, I can't remember off the top of my head for this movie and who will be later known as the director of The Revenant, which I'll get to at some point. Not next week, but or next time, I should rephrase it as. But I remember going to theaters for this thing and having, a honestly, a pretty good time with it. Let's see if it still remains true. Let's get into it. In a Broadway production, a washed-up superhero actor named Riggan Thompson, played by Michael Keaton, attempts to revive his fading career by writing, directing, and starring in a Broadway play in in New York City with his assistant daughter, Sam, played by Emma Stone, who hates her job. But there's more explanation than that, but the movie slowly progresses the details a little later, and I like the movie for that. Regan comes out in, on the set with Jake, played by the hangover Zach Galifianakis, to enter in while doing a scene with Leslie, played by Naomi Watts, Laura, played by Andrea Riseborough, as well as Ralph, who gets killed by something from the ceiling, as it was forced by Riggin himself from his costume superhero, Birdman, whom I enjoyed his Batman voice for the Birdman character. And I really like the characters, as Leslie calls f for her acting partner, Mike, played by Edward Norton, to, per, to help them out after Ralph's hospitalized situation. And he carries in all prepared after helping Leslie for a month. And I like we get, and I like we get a point of view of Riggin. And the other characters are tremendously acted by the actors. And the director, Alejandro Gonzalez Inarritu, does a great job at the POV of the characters and the cinematography is tremendous for a theater actor's point of view. One of the actors comes in wanting to meet Mike as the great actor he is and tells Riggin she's pregnant with his baby which is an awkward which is awkward and because I for the life of me can't remember her name preview night comes in and Mike drinks real gin while in the play which is fucking dangerous while performing a Broadway play and Mike acts drunk and acts crazy while performing on stage and takes it too seriously. Oh yeah, it was Laura that told Regan about the pregnancy. Let's move on. So Mike uh, performs on stage and acts drunk about it and as he takes it too seriously to the point Regan gets very upset and goes to his dressing room and says and sees Sylvia played by Amy Ryan visiting Regan after the disaster performance and talks about Sam and I love the look of this movie for what it is. Regan and Mike go in front of the theater and have a chat about what happened on the stage and they go in a bar to get a drink as they get approached by some fans to get a picture which was interesting and the bar scene with the critic is, outstand is an outstanding scene as the acting is very well done in this movie is very well made as it deserves the best picture of the year in 2014 because for me it's a hell of a lot of fun to watch. Regan visits Sam as he tells her she's going doing a good job and finds out she's doing pot and have an argument about his career and how washed up he is as an actor. And he thinks how right she about how right she is and Emma Stone does turn in some tremendous work in this movie, as well as La La Land and The Favorite, despite I didn't like that film, The the Favorite I'm talking about. She does a tremendous job in that scene. Mike attempts to get physical and has sex with Leslie while acting in the final scene of the play and has his boner sticking out, which the audience laughs at while Riggin is like, what the fuck? As Mike wanted to make it real as he took the it too far and talks with Laura as Laura briefly kisses her and she's pissed off at Mike and Regan tells her they're lucky to have her on the play and Mike still tries to take over the play as he talks with Sam and she brought up 
she was in rehab and they play a game of truth or dare and she spits on a bald guy's head which is funny in an interesting way as Mike keeps bringing up truth as he finds it interesting and the movie does have an interesting point of truth on the stage versus dare on the stage and New York get, looks great in this movie in my opinion Laura tells Riggins she's not pregnant anymore well not I don't know about n anymore but acting pregnant while Mike is stealing the show from him and gets frustrated and picks a fight with Mike and acts like and acts out his childhood which was fake like Laura did with with Riggin earlier and I thought that was clever for Riggin to pull that off as he beats up on Mike while the crew is watching and they're thinking about what the fuck which did crack me up the fuck up Riggin hears Birdman in his head and Birdman antagonizes Riggin for what he really is and goes crazy and that scene was hysterical. I will admit that out of the way. Jake comes into Riggin's dressing room as it's one hour before the final preview begins as he wants to cancel but talks him into doing the show because Martin Scorsese, or as he calls it, Scorsese, will be there and tries to figure out who to cast for his next movie. And this is something I don't say about Zach Galifianakis, but he pulls this, his role off very well. While Mike is taking over the show, which feels like every movie Ed Norton does anymore, as he acts like he does in real life. As I hear the guy is a douchebag in real life, but don't get me wrong, he is a very good actor. It's just his character comes off like an asshole, like Ed Norton does in real life. As he goes on the roof with Sam, Sam kisses Mike and refuses it. And she walks away... And he doesn't want to dare himself to do anything as she dares him to kiss her on top of the stage. And that felt very fucking creepy, I must say. Riggin does his monologue, but better than the first preview. And he tells Laura backstage how sorry he, he is about the baby. As Riggin sees Mike hanging out around Sam in a romantic way. And he goes outside to smoke a cigarette to only get himself locked out of his on, and his robe getting caught by the door as he has no choice but to run in his underwear back to the stage and he acts out the final scene in his underwear and uses his hand as a handgun which was hilarious and the choice did crack me up when he runs out of in his underwear Sam talks about her father about the drawing on toilet paper when she was in rehab and I like her backstory as she was in rehab and shows him a YouTube video of him and his under of Riggin or his fa her father in her underwear and got 3,000 views in less than an hour and I do like the chemistry between Riggin and Sam as father and daughter Riggin talks with the critic who hates him as she'll give him the worst review in the history of Broadway as she wants to kill his play and the critic comes off like a bitch in every scene I ever see her in. Riggin goes outside and gets a whiskey and drinks it in public, which is illegal. Believe it or not, in real life, it's illegal. But he's under a lot of pressure as it shows off very well by Michael Keaton act, acting as he sees Ralph and someone shouting and he goes to sleep in the middle of the sidewalk in New York. And the shots do work very well. Birdman wakes up Riggin and follows him around while Riggin looks like shit. And Riggin walks around and creates an action scene with his imagination while Birdman is tormenting him as he flies on his own from gravity as it looks like he's going to commit suicide as he gets to his location by flying from gravity, which is a fantastic looking scene. He arrives at the theater. He goes in without paying a cab driver. And nighttime comes, and the first show is in progress, as it was in intermission. And Riggin lies down on the table and talks with Sylvia, and gets called to get to the stage for the last scene, as he le loads up a real gun, which really made me nervous because I personally thought he was going to kill himself. And he's, and he gets to the stage and acts out the his final scene with the loaded gun and while acting out the scene and acting fucking crazy he shoots himself 
and the audience loves it, but what they don't realize is he shot himself with a real bullet and goes to the hospital and gets the title of the newspaper called The Unexpected Virtue of Ignorance, which is part of the title of the movie, and he wakes up, which, thank God for that, Sam visits Reagan in the hospital while Sylvia is there, and Sam sets him up with a Twitter account, and she gets a vase for the flowers she brought for, for her father, and take, he takes off the bandages on his face while Birdman is taking a dump. And by dump, I mean going number two, by the way. And goes to the window and floats in gravity as Sam sees it, and the credits begin to roll. And the climax was tremendous as it makes sense to the title, and I rather enjoyed myself watching this movie as this movie is, a, again, a hell of a lot of fun. Now it's time for the rating. I'll give this movie a 8.7 out of 10. The movie is well acted, well made, and very well done by the director Alejandro Gonzalez Inarritu, as he does a pretty damn, as he has a pretty damn good vision. I really like the POV shots of the different characters, as it reminds me of real life, as Ed Norton takes over the set and Michael Keaton plays a washed up actor from playing a superhero years ago, which are both real life things as Michael Keaton was Batman back in the day, and will be again when the Flash movie comes out. The performances are magnificent and the choices being made in this movie was interesting as it was funny and a good choice for the movie, and I really enjoyed myself watching the movie by the end of the day. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me, and until we ever get the next one, or no, there won't be a next one. What am I fucking talking about? But until then, you call me Birdie Man.